Good morning. As you can see, I am not Pastor Bo. Um, my name is Tony Landsberg. I am the Music, Outreach, and Evangelism Director at West Baldwin United Methodist Church. I am also a certified lay servant, so I am able to fill in when Pastor Bo needs a, needs a break. Uh, this week, uh, she's taking off to focus on her studies, course of study for uh, ministry. So I'm going to be trying to fill her shoes and, and lead the online service this morning. So just bear with me. I'm, I'm wearing multiple hats. So, um, let's start with our birthdays and anniversaries. Um, I just came back from the in-person service at church. I, I led the service there. Uh, we had a, a good turnout of uh, about uh, 10 or so folks. And uh, we, we had the uh, birthday girl there, uh, Wilma Mounts was there. And um, we weren't able to, to sing to her, so let's uh, sing happy birthday online. <laughs> attention to the uh, the flowers uh, that are on, on the floor in front of my keyboard uh, the ones on the which would be your left uh, were actually given by the congregation to Pastor Bo for a pastor appreciation so uh, uh, I brought these home for Pastor Bo to to see and appreciate and she has the card so uh, you know she passes on her her gratitude and, and, uh, and an appreciation of, of, of the congregation for for thinking of her. The the flowers on my left, on your right, um, uh, were donated by by Unum, who I work for, um, as a, uh, uh, a condolence uh, and uh, recognition of the passing of my mother, who passed on September twenty fourth. So I just wanted to put those on display this morning to, to kind of spruce up the place, give it a, a different look. As you can see, I am uh, front and center, um, since I'm going to be leading the, the service, delivering the message, and uh, um, didn't make sense for me to get up and down to, to read, so I hope uh, no one minds that I'm just going to, to lead service right from here. It just makes the most sense uh, uh, logistically. So, let's start with our, our prelude. So, good morning, Hope. Hope has uh, just come home from, from opening shift, and she, I may be able to talk her into reading a, a few verses of scripture in just a moment. I 
belong to the band. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. I belong to the band. Hallelujah. One of these days, about twelve o'clock, this old world's gonna reel and rock. I belong to the band. Hallelujah. I belong to the band. Hallelujah. 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 I belong to the band. Hallelujah. When I get to heaven, I'm gonna sit right down. Ask my Lord for my starry crown. I belong to the band. Hallelujah. 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 I belong to the band. Hallelujah. 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 I belong to the band. Hallelujah. Talk about me just as much as you please. I'll talk about you. Down on my knees, I belong to the band. Hallelujah. 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 I belong to the band. I belong to the band Hallelujah Please join with me in reading the call to worship that is found online um, You should have seen it uh, shared up last night in the bulletin material this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I don't have a bulletin. This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. The hour is coming, and now is, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for such the Father seeks to worship him. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. The song of praise is praise the Lord with the sound of trumpet. It's uh, the faith we sing 2020. And it also can be found in heminary.org. Praise the Lord with the sound of trumpet. Praise the Lord with the harp and lute. Praise the Lord with the gentle sounding flute. Praise the Lord in the field or forest. Praise the Lord in the city square. Praise the Lord anytime and anywhere. Praise the Lord in the wind and sunshine. Praise the Lord in the dark of night. Praise the Lord in the rain or snow or in the morning light. Praise the Lord in the deepest valley. Praise the Lord on the highest hill. Praise the Lord, never let your voice be still. Praise the Lord with the crashing cymbal. Praise the Lord with the pipe and string. Praise the Lord with the joyful songs you sing. Praise the Lord on a weekday morning. Praise the Lord on a Sunday noon. Praise the Lord in the light of sun or moon. Praise the Lord in the time of sorrow. Praise the Lord in the time of joy. Praise the Lord every moment, nothing let your praise destroy. Praise the Lord in the peace and quiet. Praise the Lord in your work or play. Praise the Lord everywhere in every way. have a, 
a memory of that song, I just wanted to, 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 to share that uh, uh, a former pastor um, who had uh, kids, young kids, uh, and he, he was pretty young himself, and uh, I, I just remember his youngest, and he must have been three, four, not even five, and uh, the, the, this pastor would ask, you know, what songs you know, to the congregation uh, to, to kind of do a hymn sim, you know, kind of pick a, a prelude or a postlude or, or a, a, a offering song. And I just remember his, his son, you know, again, three or four years old, would always go, 2020, 2020. And, uh, I, you know, that just has stuck with me, uh, you know, for, for all these years. So please join with me, again, found in your, your bulletin online, uh, the, the opening prayer. O oh God, our guide and guardian, you have led us apart from the busy world into the quiet of your house. Grant us grace to worship you in spirit and in truth, to the comfort of our souls and the upbuilding of every good purpose and holy desire. Enable us to do more perfectly the work to which you have called us, that we may not fear the coming of night when we shall resign into your hands the task which you have committed to us. So we may worship you not with our lips at this hour, but in word and in deed all the days of our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, Amen. So at this moment, I'll pass it over to my daughter, Hope, to share uh, the scripture readings. Um, very short, but uh, uh, very important to, to my message today. First scripture reading is John 19, verses 26 and 27. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. Proverbs 23, verse 22. Listen to your father who begot you, and do not despise your mother when she is old. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. And our song response is uh, Together We Serve, hymn 2175, verses 1 and 2. Before I begin the, the message this morning, I just wanted to take a moment for personal prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray that my message this morning glorifies and lifts up your name. I pray that my words are received with open hearts and open minds. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you. So the, the two scriptures that Hope read are handpicked um, and 
they weren't what I started with. I had an idea, as I normally do, either for message or you know special music. I I pretty much um, go with what I feel. I go with the spirit, and that that is literally how how this went this week. Um, as as many of you know, uh, I lost my mother September twenty fourth. Still in a grieving process, but I'm, I'm mostly at peace with that, um, as, as can be expected. Um, you, you never get over the grieving. So I, I started there, and, and, and I, again, this is uh, very much what I shared at the in-person service this morning, that the, the scriptures kind of jumped out to me for different reasons, and, and hopefully you'll see how it plays into my overall message. So... In, in the Gospel of John, chapter 19, verses 26 and 27, Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her. He said to his mother, and that is Jesus speaking to Mary, woman, here is your son. Then he says to the disciple, here is your mother, Mary. Mary. And from that hour, that disciple, who isn't named, took her into his own home. When I first read that, it's like, it's interesting. Um, the, 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 the disciple isn't called out by name. And I wasn't sure if there was any significance to that. Um, we know that that the disciple was actually John, who is the author of the gospel. And I think it, it does uh, play an important part of, of, of the overall message of what he's trying to convey. I think the other point to realize is when this conversation is happening, when Jesus says to, to uh, you know, his, his mother and to the disciple these things, He's on the cross. He's being crucified. And that is powerful to me. That at that point, that he's, we, we know, is in an extreme state of suffering. He stops as much as he can to demonstrate the care and compassion for his mother to this at the moment, unnamed disciple. And that is an act that is beyond words, in my, my opinion. That he, he is entrusting this disciple, so obviously he has trust. He, he, he uh, has faith. He knows that, this disi that he's leaving his mother in good hands with this disciple. And as she ages and, and needs more physical care and, uh, uh, and, and to be supported, Jesus knows that this is the right disciple. And we do learn that it is John, and we do learn that, that Jesus' love for John was great. Not that he didn't love all the disciples, but he chose John purposely. But I think, again... The, the fact that John does not call his own name out. He basically says the disciple twice in those two verses. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he says to his mother Mary, woman, here is your son, telling Mary that John is going to care for you as, as I do and did. That consider John your son. And then he tells the disciple, John, here is your mother. And I think that's equally powerful that he's saying, here's my mother that I'm entrusting you to care for as your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home, meaning 
she became a member of his family and essentially a mother. So, obviously it hits me because it is a relationship between a mother and son. But I think those are powerful messages that even in the face of adversity, Jesus took time to, to have that conversation with John and, and Mary. Pretty powerful in my opinion. The second scripture reading, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 22, is, is not directly related, but I liked the message. Listen to your father who begot you. And I think we understand that, that we, we, we need to, to pay heed. We, we, we need to respect. We need to uh, appreciate the wisdom of, of our parents, of our elders. I think you can, you can understand that. So listen to, to, to your father who begot you. But it also says in the second half of that verse, do not despise your mother when she is old. Do not despise your mother when she is old. And that, that piece I latched on to that, you know, there, I think human um, nature that when, you're, when family members are aging, getting older, they're not able to um, be as active as they once were. They're not able to contribute um, because of the limitations, because their bodies are breaking down, their minds are breaking down, that um, they, they are almost uh, burdensome. And some people feel that it's a burden to care for aging uh, parents. But this, this proverb, which is more of a directive, dare say, you know, I dare say a commandment to, to not despise your mother when she is old. And I talked a little bit about this at the in-person service as well, that there may be a little sexism in, in that verse as well, that, you know, respect your, your father who begot you and but don't despise your mother that the father is put in, in a slightly favorable light that, you know, it doesn't say do not despise your father. And just digging a little further into that, I, I think it's, it, it, it is for us to look past that, you know, just because your mother isn't able to physically contribute or maybe there are, again, physical or mental limitations, there's a lot that aging parents in general, you know, not to be sexist, can, can and do contribute. The wisdoms, the life experiences, um, it, 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 you know, when, when those are gone, they're gone. And if you don't take full advantage of getting to know your parents or, you know, whether they're your biological parents, your uh, the parents that raised you, uh, elders in your family, when they pass on, if you didn't get to know them and appreciate their life and their their contributions, it's it's lost. So, to me, it's it's a a directive. Don't don't disregard your mother just because she's old. So these, 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 these circumstances, because of the aging, whatnot, do not lessen a child's, a son or a daughter's responsibility to care for and respect and, and get to know that aging person, in this case, the mother. So I just want to, to share the, 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 the reasons why I picked those two scripture readings for this morning that kind of, that do feed into my, my message, my, my homily, my testimony, as I often do. 
and hopefully I can tie this together. As I mentioned, and as many of you know, my mother passed on the morning of September 24th, just a couple weeks ago. September 24th is also my birthday. We know now that she passed sometime between 8 a.m. and probably 10 a.m. And the reason we know that is, you know, she, she's made it a tradition to post a childhood birthday picture of her three children on, on, her, on their birthdays, on their respective birthdays on Instagram. She's been doing this for a few years. That morning, September 24th, she posted as on schedule, as, as expected, an old picture of me as a young teenager, um, I think sitting at the, the kitchen table with the birthday cake in front of me, I think right, right about the time blowing out the candles or right after, huge grin on my face. And we know she did that before 8 a.m. and because of the timestamp. I did not see it until later in the day because I was busy with work. I had some important deliverables and I was in meetings, you know, working from home, had my headset on, working on this document and got to a point where it's almost noon. I felt good. I was on schedule, got this deliverable done. I was ready to send it off. Um, I believe I just hit send when Bo came into my office crying on the phone and was, I don't know how else to say it, maybe a little hysterical, not quite to that point, but getting there. And I couldn't tell what was going on. I, I, you know, I, I, I jumped to conclusions because... It, I think it was a combination of me not understanding, comprehending. Maybe Bo was telling me that my brain wasn't processing or maybe she wasn't able to process and wasn't able to articulate. Um, but there was definitely not clear communication. And, you know, unfortunately, I was thinking it was our, our brother Paul. And... Um, that that would be a cause for us to be emotional. But she's like, no, 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 it's it's your sister. And I'm thinking, what what happened to my sister, Susan? And she's like, no, no, no. It, it, she, she said that your, your brother found your mother unresponsive. We have to go. And it's like, okay, it, it's starting to process and I'm starting to understand. So um, I immediately emailed my team I said, you know, I got this news. I don't know the details. I have to step away. Um, you can reach me. I'll have my cell. But I basically took my headset off, turned everything down, packed it all up, and Hope was home at that point. We, we quickly got in the car and drove the hour and 15 minutes to, to my mother's house. And that's when we realized that it... it it was final. It wasn't a, a case where she was unresponsive and was taken to the hospital for, for, for treatment or care. She, she had passed. And that, that set in once the family was all together and it was clearly communicated that EMTs, the funeral director, had just left moments before we got there. So back to the significance of September 24th. I was shocked. I was overwhelmed with the realization that for the rest of my life, I will remember that my mother passed on my birthday and as a negative event, that you know, my birthday is also a marker, a memorial for the passing of my mother. Over the last week, as I've prepared my thoughts and put together this service, I've move to a place of, of coming to peace with it. And, and I came to the realization that it was selfish for me to think that way. As I get older, I believe more and more there are no such things as coincidences. I'm confident 
that there, there's something for me to learn personally from this. And it is a positive. It's, it's a way to remember the cycle of life. September 24th being my birth. And many years, 50 years, 51 years. I'll share that. 51 years later, the passing of my mother on the same day. So the cycle of life and that in, you know, her life sacrifices. I won't get in, into those, but remembering the, the gifts that she's passed on to me, my brother and sister, her grandchildren, the extended family, those that knew her, appreciate the way she approached life, the, the energy that she had, being a spark plug, already talking about getting the snowblower ready for, for this coming winter, was very self-sufficient, stubbornly so. But that's one piece. The other positives that she's passed on to us of the value of getting family together, having good times, laughing, sometimes just sitting and talking for hours, losing track of time. Her appreciation of arts and music. I'm, I'm not an, an artist by, by any means, but I've seen the skills in her granddaughter, Emily, and her daughter, Susan, and in the different crafts that they they do. And, you know, my mother's love of music, obviously, I carry forth through, through me. And, you know, her love and caring of pets, I think all, all of her kids have pets, and, um, and the, the compassion that, that we, we've all had about pets being family members, and they're not, they're not here today, but You've seen our, our two cats. So two, two questions that my mother asked me years ago, not, not too long, I would say in the last five, five to eight years, definitely after since Bo was assigned to West Baldwin um, and we had been here a few years and I started to get more involved both with music and with other ministries in the church, he asked me two pointed questions. Why do you devote so much time to church? Is one, and I paused and reflected on that, and um, a little little surprised, but I explained, you know, knowing that Bo's calling into ministry, going back to. Um, you know, early 2000s, so it's, you know, been almost 20 years, shouldn't be a surprise, and being active in the prior church, um, joining and getting involved with music and different ministries there, and doing the same at West Baldwin. And, I, you know, I explained that I was finding peace, I was finding direction, I was finding energy supporting my church, West Baldwin United Methodist Church. I further share that, you know, I was experiencing growth as a Christian and as a musician. She smiled and, and nodded, and I, I don't know if she really understood, and, and I'll get into that in, in a moment. The other question, which, you know, you could say is 1A and 1B, not really number one and number two, but what, why do you only play music in church and I think people that know me know that I've directed energies outside of, of church, but usually I try to associate or, or play under the banner of West Ball United Methodist Church. But I've, I've shared music in other venues that have not been church related. But I think it's just because she's a little disconnected living, you know, again, almost an hour and a half away um, and not able to, to always see what I do. 
we weren't a, a church family growing up. She was active in church when, when she was young, when, when she was growing up, but her, her kids, her family, when she got married to my father, church wasn't a, a central thing. It wasn't a, a uh, priority. It's not that we never went to church. We, we went to Christmas services. We went to special other services, weddings, etc. But it wasn't a weekly uh, commitment. It wasn't a thing that we did. So that, that kind of explains you know, why her questions were, were being asked this, this late in our lives. For those who may not know, she had significant hearing loss since she was young as well. Even with hearing aids, she struggled to hear and understand conversations. This became an obstacle for her to get work outside of the home and to do simple things like to, to go out to a movie, to run into somebody she knows at the grocery store and have a conversation. She always felt uncomfortable because she couldn't hear um, and, and didn't want to look foolish. I mean, she pretty much said that, and I think everyone can understand that. Um, when, when we can't hear. Hearing is a um, sense that, you know, those that have it and, and when they lose it, they know how important it is. So she wasn't able to attend church because she just felt that she, she was just there to, to be there. She couldn't really hear what was going on, couldn't, couldn't hear the words being spoken by the pastor, couldn't hear the words being sung. Um, so she felt disconnected again and, and, and uncomfortable. But she did find later in life, and probably, um, I would say, five plus years, that um, she didn't like computers, didn't like you know desktop computers, laptops, but she liked the phone, the, the, the smartphone. And she quickly learned how to text, and that's how she communicated um, and kept in touch with uh, you know, us, my family that lives further away from her. Uh, my brother and sister live right in town where she lives and they can stop by more frequently. But it, it connected us all. Um, whether we did group chats or, you know, she would just ping, you know, during the week, how are you? Did you see this in the news? Or, you know, what's going on? Are you going to come visit? Um, or I would do the same. And then, like I said, you know, she, she didn't have a Facebook account, but like Instagram and would post things there. And that was her outlet to kind of uh, track her, her life and, uh, you know, her diary of being out in her yard that she liked out in the woods with her, with her dog and her grandkids, her family. So when we moved to online services and I started copying the Facebook live videos to YouTube, after a month or so of posting, my mother texted me and she said she enjoyed Pastor Bo's message and, and the service in general. I was surprised and, and confused. I was thinking, how, how could she hear it? She explained that YouTube actually does a good job with closed captioning. I had never even thought of that. It wasn't why I was putting it there. But she figured it out. She turned on closed captioning. And it actually does a good job. After she told me, I went back and um, I've looked at other videos turning it on. It does a pretty decent job of translating. And she was able to connect to the services that she was asking me about, asking why. So she felt more connected then. And she would provide feedback to me. She would provide feedback to Pastor Bo and it was fruit that even though that was one example of, of many that the online ministry was reaching someone for a reason that they couldn't be reached even pre-COVID. And it made her feel connected to our ministry even though she didn't live in our immediate community. She was an extension of our family and very interested in what we were doing and what was going on at that point. And she was seeing why it was important for, for me, for us, for Pastor Bo, Hope, our family, to be involved with our church. And she understood that spreading God's love and God's hope amidst uh, all, all of the, the challenges we, we see in front of us, whether it's COVID, the politics, 
the general negativity around us, we know that God's message is, is the light, is the way to get us through and get us forward. How does this all tie into the scripture readings? It is our responsibility. It is our duty to carry on our family legacy, values, traditions when we lose a parent or sibling. When a parent or child passes, the relationship between the two is forever. If you think back to John's gospel where Jesus is saying to John and his mother Mary, please care for each other. That's essentially what he's saying. Be a mother and son to each other. I do not have long for this world, this physical world, but please continue on. And he's essentially saying, I will be your son and you will always be my mother. And that won't be forgotten. So the lesson that I take is that I will ensure that the legacy of my mother is carried on, that I carry it on no matter what adversity I may face. Even in the time of Jesus' greatest adversity, the crucifixion, he takes the time to have that conversation. We, we cannot measure to that. So I will ensure that my mother's legacy, the memory, her values, traditions are remembered and still be in awe of what Jesus said, when he said it, and how John documented it. It's there for us to learn, just as many of the scriptures are there for us to learn and to apply. So I leave you with these thoughts. I know it's easy for me to connect to these because it's, it is raw. I've, I've lost my mother and I'm grieving and moving on as the rest of my family. But remember that it's our responsibility to keep that legacy alive, to keep the memories alive. Amen. Now we move to our prayers and concerns, the prayers of the people. I will raise up some of the prayers that were, were raised at the end person, and then I'll I will look at the, the, the ones shared online. I must hope you can see those. Hang on. So while you're doing that, I'll, I'll share the, the in-person uh, prayers. Uh, praise shared by Pat that Larry was with us and worshiping with us after not being well. He was in Maine Med, but it was good to see Larry, and I was joking that I thought I saw him doing a little dance down the, the center aisle to get to his seat in the pew. Shirley asked for prayers for Francis O'Neill, who is uh, at Mean Med. Pat raised for prayers for herself that um, she's going to have an MRI on Thursday and then depending on the outcome of that, we'll have uh, potentially a, a follow-up scheduled uh, echocardiogram. So prayers for Pat, keep Pat in your prayers. And Tammy shared that uh, Wayne is, uh, has, has shingles. And uh, as we all know, that is not a, a fun, fun situation to be in. So, so praise for Larry and please keep Francis Pat and Wayne in your prayers. Were there any online hope? Yeah, there was David Seeley. He said prayers for Leah's surgery October 15th. Any 
others? Uh, I have one. The district manager for my store, Bobby, he, his grandfather, who basically raised him, had passed right at the beginning of the pandemic. And Bobby had taken some time off and had tried to come back last week, but he just couldn't. So he's still in the grieving process. Just prayers for him. Yeah, absolutely. We keep Bobby and family in prayer. So please, please join me with uh, a moment of, of silent prayer for those that have been lifted. Lord, we lift these joys and concerns from our church body to you in love. We pray that you bless all those who have been raised this morning. We also lift up our leaders our military members, our first responders, our teachers, and all those who minister to helping others every day. We lift up those who may be suffering and may not know how to ask for help. They may not know how to pray. We thank you for your presence in our lives and the many blessings you provide. Amen. And it is our tradition to pause and lift up our tithes and offerings, our gifts. I ask those that um, normally attend the in-person service, if you're watching this online, if you can, please send your offerings to, to Nancy, or if you're not sure, you can reach out to, to, to me or the church page. We can get you the address to send those. And my, my special request, if anyone else, not normally a member of the congregation, if you're viewing this and you feel moved by the Spirit and would like to help us with our ministries, please reach out to us and we would gladly talk with you and, and offer and, and, and welcome any offerings that you do offer up. So for the offertory today, um, I've been putting this off for, for a while and I just feel the call to do it. It's typically a, a, a song I do a cappella with, with Paul. I'm going to do it a little differently today. And that being said, I am severely looking forward to when Paul and I can do this again in person. As I went down in the river to pray, Studying about that good old way And who shall wear the starry crown Good Lord, show me the way Oh, sisters, let's go down Let's go down, come on down Oh, sisters, let's go down Down in the river to pray As I went down in the river to pray Studying about that good old way And who shall wear the robe and crown Good Lord, show me the way Oh, brothers, let's go down Let's go down, come on down Oh, brothers, let's go down Down in the river to pray As I went down in the river to pray Studying about that good old way And Shall wear the starry crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, fathers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, fathers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, 
brothers, let's go down. Come on down, don't you wanna go down? Oh, mothers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sinners, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sinners, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Please join me in the prayer of dedication. Wonderful, amazing God, we thank you that you have raised Jesus from the dead, bringing us the promise of new life. With the dawning of this new day, may we awake to new opportunities to love and serve you and witness to Christ whom you have raised. Use us and our gifts to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join me for the song of peace, trust, and obey, found in United Methodist Hymnal 467 or hymnary.org.
I will share the benediction with you. Serve your God with patience and passion. Be deliberate in enacting your faith. Be steadfast in celebrating the Spirit's power. And may peace be your way in the world. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. For the postlude, it's it's a little different. Uh, it's more of a, a folk song that, again, I don't know how, why, and you know I don't question it. These songs call to me. Uh, I crossed paths with the song years ago. I won't, once you hear it, you'll you'll understand. Um, but it wasn't until recently, in the last couple months, I was just flipping through YouTube and and I I saw a video of this done. Uh, more recently uh, in, in, in a movie and uh, really liked the, the arrangement and it's like, that's calling to me. I like the, I like the words, I like the sound, I like the music and quickly forgot about it. And it wasn't until um, during the week actually uh, watching YouTube and YouTube's like, hey, you know, you haven't watched this video in a while. Are you going to do anything? You know, and I'm sure it was God speaking to me. So I did share this as, as one of the songs yesterday morning, and I just feel compelled to, to share it again. It's uh, called 500 Miles, written by Hetty West in 1961, and made popular in 62 by uh, Peter, Paul, and Mary. If you missed the train no more, you will know that I am gone. You can hear the whistle blow a hundred miles. A hundred miles, a hundred miles, a hundred miles, a hundred miles. You can hear the whistle blow a hundred miles. Lord, I'm one, Lord, I'm two, Lord, I'm three. Lord, I'm four. Lord, I'm five hundred miles away from home. Away from home, away from home, away from home, away from home. Lord, I'm five hundred miles away from home. Not a shirt on my back, not a penny to my name. Lord, I can't go back home this way. This away, this away, this away, this away. Lord, I can't go back home this way. If you miss the train, I'm on, you will know that I am gone. 
You can hear the whistle go a hundred miles, a hundred miles, a hundred miles, a hundred miles, a hundred miles. You can hear the whistle blow a hundred miles. You can hear the whistle blow a hundred miles. You can hear the whistle blow a hundred miles.